Hey guys! I don't know if you know about our gamer giveaway. If you do, sorry for this. If not, check it out. I've put the link in the description. Uh, it's a big thank you because we reached 100 subscribers. Thank you so much. Please go and check out the video and enter. It'll be drawn June 10th, which will be our Zelda video for that week. So make sure you keep an eye out to see if you won! Hello YouTube and welcome to another RJ Makes a Game video. Um, you'll notice I've added a few things. This video isn't going to be anywhere as near as long as the other one, so please bear with me. Um, you can see I've added some little gems and a score system. If you look at the top left there, and we've got this uh, life system, and look, I can die now, which is um, you know a, a big start uh, to these sorts of uh, you know games. This means that you can actually have a bit of a challenge if you can die. And so that's just the basics of what we've got here. Um, I'll show you how to add those features in here today. I've also added um, game controller support. For I have a game control. Oops, so there's another little glitch there. Um, I have a, a game controller which is actually comes up as a joystick, but I'll tell you how to do the game pad. So let's walk you through real quick. First off, um, what we had last time, uh, I've was the sprites and the objects and things, and I've just put them into folders. Just a bit of housekeeping, make it nice and clean. Um, I've also added a sprite for the the life, which is. Just uh, I just made a circle and wrote life on it and then added um, image glow effect and did that and then for the second part of that I uh, added the glow again on the inside like doubled doubled the glow so it sort of you know does that little flashy thing um, there and again you're centering centering the sprite and then the gem I had this gem from a previous game and I just thought I'd import that. And that can be the thing that we collect. Um, and I added that from a picture file, so I just went add from file. And then, um, see, I've got all these different kinds of gems here. And I just che checked the one that I liked. I liked that one. So I did that. And then again, I added a glow effect, the green glow effect on that. Again, we're centering that. Um, the other things that I've added here is a script. Um, I've tried to make this in a higher resolution so you guys can see the script a bit more clearly this time. Um, it just says, if global dot... P capital P underscore lives is more than zero. It then has like this open brackets for the if statement. Um, so this is the effect that happens. So if if lives is more than zero, you're gonna global dot P underscore lives is minus equal to one. So it's gonna take a life away from that total, and it's gonna restart the room. Um, else, and then again, if 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 it's not that, if it's obviously less than zero, it's gonna restart the game. So. Uh, that creates the script death, so we just call that later on, as you'll see. The other thing that I've added in is a font, which um, I just came down and chose uh, Aris Demi, because I like Aris Demi, and set it to a size 24. I needed to do that because, firstly, it makes it look a bit nicer, but secondly, it, um, the, it the score was too small to read. You couldn't read it when I was playing before. Um, I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. Excuse me. All right. Um... Yeah, so then I've created an object for the life, um, and on the create event, um, I just set the image speed to 2, so that it's going to not go, um, you know, as ridiculously fast in the 60 frame room, though I don't think I noticed it flashing, so we might have a look at that in a second when we open this up again. Um, but other than that, the life is by itself, and I created a gem. Now in the gem, I set a variable on the gem of value, which equals 1. And what I'm going to do later on is have different colored gems, very similar to, uh, you know, Zelda. Um, so as it as it goes, they'll be worth different amounts, so 1, 5, 10, and so on. And again, I've also done that image speed 2, which sets the speed for the image. Um, and that gem will later be apparent for other things as well. Um, now, I've created two new objects. One is called a controller, um, and it doesn't have a sprite. And um, it's just where I'm setting all my global variables, right? So I've got global p lives, p underscore lives, which I'm setting to three at the start. Um, global p underscore score, which is going to be zero. Um, global p underscore gems, which is also going to be zero. And um, what that is doing is 
um, basically just sell, telling us this is where all our variables are stored and it gives the it creates that variable right from the start um, global means it's like a, a thing used by the entire game um, not just one particular group so you don't have to call everything um, now the thing is uh, I put this in, uh, you could put it in whatever you want, but I like to put it in a separate controller. The other thing is that there's also a lives, if you don't put that P underscore for lives and score, then there's already a lives and score system built into that. And I try not to use that, I try to use my own variables, just because, you know, I, I, I'm paranoid about machines, you know. <laughs> and the other one is um, uh, OHUD, so object HUD, I'm just drawing a display, um, which is draw GUI. And um, that, I'll leave this on here, you'd probably want to pause that, but I'll walk through it very quickly. It says, draw set font, so it tells it to set that font that we created before. I called it font underscore aristemi underscore 24, so I just named the title of the font and the, and the size. And then um, I get it to draw the lives, which I get it to draw in the bottom left corner. So, um, draw sprite, and then it draws the life at coordinate 0, x coordinate 0, y coordinate 32. Uh, sorry, 0 is the sub-image, my bad, and x-coordinate 32, y-coordinate eight, 862. I played around with it to see where it fits best on screen, and that's where I found worked well for me. Um, draw text color, 64. Uh, so this one here, it's saying where to draw, x-coordinate 64, y-coordinate 844. So because the text is a bit bigger than 32, or a bit smaller than 32, like it doesn't exactly match, um, when you're doing a sprite and a text, you know, you might have to fiddle around with the Y coordinate to make it line up nicely. Then you've got to, this is what it's actually going to write in the text. So I made it write with, with brackets, uh, sorry, not brackets, with quotation marks. I put a equal sign and a space, and then I put plus to say draw, and then draw the string, and the string that it's drawing is global.plives, which we set before, right? Um, and I chose lime and green, lime and green, to give it sort of that nice color texture that it's got, and 255. You could just do draw text without the line, without the color and not put in the colors, but I like to put the color in and have control of that. Uh, again, score. Now, the score is a bit easier because it can go on the same Y coordinate because it's using the same thing. And then again, it's just um, draw text, color, um, score, and then uh, lime, green, lime, green. And I put the space in again, and you know, I've used the little quotation marks to tell it to do that. And then again, draw text color, and then the string I'm using is, uh, you know, uh, quotation equals space, quotation, and then plus, and then the string, and then that global string, p score. And then the same is exactly the same thing for the gems. So pretty straightforward. Now the thing with those two objects is you wanna make sure this persistent is checked for both the HUD and for the controller. Right, so if you don't have that, then it's going to disappear as you know you move rooms and things like that. You want to keep them persistent no matter what room we're in. Finally, the final bit of coding that we've got here we've got a few things here. So, um, I didn't add anything to that, as you can see, I didn't add anything to that to the core mechanics at all. So, that's all still the same. Um, I've added a collision with life in this case, we've got one script which, uh, sorry, one code, execute code thing, which I've checked other here, that's really important. And then you go instance, destroy other, and then brackets. And that just means that when you hit the life, it destroys that. And then the other one is give the bonus. So when they run into life, it's gonna destroy the life. This one applies to self. The global.p lives plus equals one. So it's gonna give the player one up. And global p score is going to go up by a thousand. So I wanted the bonus points to go up by a thousand when you get a life. Uh, and then the gem does the same thing. Other instance destroy other. Um, and then uh, you know gems. So it's going to add gems up. And the way it's going to do that is by doing plus equals. That amount is going to go up by other dot value. So other um, with the dot says it calls this value variable on the other object. Now that's a really powerful thing to have um, and uh, you guys need to start learning how to do that. I think that's that's one of the most valuable skills a programmer, a, a new programmer can do is calling a variable from another object. Um, in this case we can do that. Other just means whatever it is that is designated as the other in the in the code that is sort of you know, being made up by the event. And then uh, for the score it's going to go up by the amount of the value, which remember we set the value in the object gem, that's what it's calling, uh, by 10 times 10. And that gives us bonus points and it gives the player, uh, you know, a, a new gem. 
Uh, and then outside the room, once we're outside the room, it's just execute script, script def, which we wrote before, which I already showed you. And then in the room, I've just spread them around and chucked them in different spots. Uh, and that is that is where we're at. So let's uh, run the game and I'll show it to you again now that you've seen all that. So you can see I've got my uh, my green... Oh, that's not true. There is one other thing that I haven't shown you guys, which I'll go through and do in a second. Uh, in fact, let's do that now. I lied. I said I didn't change anything in this. In the step event, I did change stuff in the step event. And that is this. So, I am using a joystick. Uh, well, it, it's a game controller, but it comes up as joystick because it's an old one. Um, so... For that, what I've done is uh, where, where it says key right, key right is going to equal 1 when we press D, right? Um, or you might have chosen vertically visual key right and, and whatever, and that's fine. Um, but we can see here, um, I want it to also work if I'm using my joystick, because I like to use my controller for this, uh, especially for platformer games. Um, and I've just put these, uh, th these two, they're, they're called syntax bars, but I don't know... Um, what you know, the real gaming community, like you know, the programming community calls them. Um, it it represents or. So when you put two of them together, it says or. So it's gonna if if this one here is true, and or this one is true, then it will um make it happen. So it's it's one or the other. It won't do both, right? Um, but here's the thing. So uh, I've had to do a range, so I'm using the control, like the D-pad on my controller as the, the move around rather than the analog stick. You could do the analog stick as well. Um, it's just knowing what what button does what on your controller basically and how to program that into this. It's taken me years and years to work this out, so I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, joystick. Uh, POV, so my D-stick comes up as the POV hat and if I want it to go um, and it's joystick zero is what that is representing. It's the ID of the joystick. Um, so if the POV hat, and it works off an angle in that case, is um, more than one, more than or equal to one. So if I'm not touching it, it's zero. Um, and we don't want that. If I And it works off like a 360 degree with uh, you know zero being forward, 90 being right, 180 being down, and 270 being left. So for it to move right, I want it to be any of the... So if I'm pressing diagonally up and right, or diagonally down and right, it's still going to uh, trigger. So um, if it's more than 1 and... So again, double and, it's similar to the double or, and it's less than 179, or less than or equal to 179, so if I'm pressing diagonally down, it's going to do that as well. Um, then it will still equal right, and then the same, and then that is all in brackets because we only want a one to register back. If it's if you don't put it all in brackets, it's not gonna, uh, you know, it, it confuses it because it's looking for this or this and this. It doesn't make sense, so you need to put it all in brackets. Uh, and then likewise, keyboard check now for this, the whole thing is in brackets because it's a negative, so we're gonna mu multiply it by like minus one. So. Um, it's the same thing though. Uh, it's you know 181 to 359. So obviously 360 is is all the way around. So I'm just putting in that range. So if joystick is more than 1800, uh, 181 degrees and less than 359 degrees, it's going to represent as a one, and that'll be a left. And then um, then just button check uh, one. I don't know if I can do pressed. Is pressed a thing? Yeah, pressed isn't a thing for this. So um, it has to be the button, which means I can hold down the button and bounce around. And it says, you know, joystick zero, button number two. Okay, so that's it. That's it for the, the coding of this um, of this one. And you can see, like I was saying, if I hold, if I just hold the jump button down, he jumps like that, so because it doesn't have the button pressed, and that's Game Maker doesn't have that, that code in it, so um, that is sort of what uh, we're, what we're, you know, what we're worried about, I guess, is that, you know, Game Maker isn't supporting that particular thing anymore, they don't really support joysticks, because most people have a gamepad, I don't have a gamepad yet. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it for this game, it, now it's sort of playable, you can build your rooms and things, and um, all that
all that jazz and um, yeah like it needs some tidying up obviously because uh, you know we we can run off the edge over there for instance and there are other things but yeah that's that's it for this I hope this was a helpful video any questions please put it uh, in the description below the comments below ciao for now